We're a few days through free agency and Josh Edwards from CBS was so nice to give us a mock draft. So you know what that means. Welcome back to Mock the Mock where we take a look at someone else's mock draft and I'm not going to give you my views, thoughts, and opinions. Let's go ahead. Get into this sucker as pick one. We got the Chicago Bears going with Caleb Williams. I kind of feel like that's the pick. I know now with the well running dry on a Justin Fields trade, maybe some people are like, well, yeah, let's just keep Fields and trade the pick. But I feel like I feel like it's a bit of an indictment on Fields that no one wants to trade for him or at least trade uh, lucrative picks to get him. Why would you want to stick with him when you could go ahead and just get the best quarterback in this class, one of the better quarterbacks we've seen the last couple of years in terms of prospects in Caleb Williams? I say just take him. And if you have to hold on to fields, then you hold on to fields and kind of hope that maybe during training camp or early in the season, there may be an injury to quarterback and this team who is now down their starter sends you a lucrative deal to get Justin Fields. That's kind of, I feel like the hope if you can't move him feels, and I'm a big fan of fields. I want to see him as a starter in the NFL. I just feel like if you're the bears, Caleb Williams is the option to go with fields would have to take him elsewhere but i don't know man we'll see we'll see we still got uh, quite a bit of off season left the commanders go Jaden daniels i mean the commanders are going quarterback regardless here who that is ah we we don't really know they still got to attend lsu and uh north carolina's pro day to check out Jaden daniels and drake may I don't know if they've made the decision on it yet. I know a lot of people like the Cliff Kingsbury, Jaden Daniels combo, but like for me, Drake May is far enough up my board compared to Daniels where I would take May. So I don't know. We'll 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 find out. We'll see. Regardless, this pick feels like quarterback. And then the New England Patriots, they go with Drake May. They're in a very interesting situation where maybe they could go with Marvin Harrison Jr. after losing out on the Calvin Ridley bid. Maybe they just trade the pick and look to get more draft capital down the road and uh, maybe go quarterback next year. Maybe they go quarterback. Maybe they trade back up into the first round. Like there's a lot of options here or they could just take quarterback here. And in this case, they take Drake May, which means the Arizona Cardinals at four are probably going to take Marvin Harrison Jr., which they in fact do. They just traded away. Rondale Moore for Desmond Ritter. That was a bad trade. Uh, just going to throw that out there. I'm not a fan of that one. So, yeah, they desperately need receiver now because you really only have Michael Wilson. <laughs> so, yeah, they're kind of in the perfect spot here to grab a wide receiver. And luckily, they get the best prospect in this class here. Pick five. We got a trade as the, Air as the Los Angeles Chargers. Trade with the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings move up to get J.J. McCarthy. Sam Darnold, obviously, is a bridge option. He's on a one-year deal. So it kind of feels like the Vikings are primed to make this move up. And the Chargers are a prime candidate to move down. This is Jim Harbaugh's first draft. So, yeah, grab more draft capital and get younger on that team. Uh, I think the Vikings have enough draft capital to get this done. If you remember this uh, in the 2023 draft, the Cardinals and the Lions had a similar trade where the Cardinals moved up from 12 to 6. And all it really cost them was a fifth rounder and their second round pick became a third. So the Vikings can do that. I mean, it, with the, you, you could end up just swapping your second take the Chargers third and then throw fifth in there and just, yeah, bam, make it work. It, it's plausible. We can do it. JJ McCarthy, also a guy that probably shouldn't start early. Not saying he shouldn't start in year one, but I don't think he starts early, like maybe first eight to 10 weeks. Kind of see how Sam Darnold's uh, taking the, the reins here. And then the New York Giants take Malik Neighbors. Yeah, they've been pretty active outside of the receiver position. Actually, they see uh, Isaiah Hawkins go. Uh, but they've made additions on the offensive line that I really like. Illuminor, uh, they brought in Runyon. So, uh, they, they, I mean, you lost Saquon, but you're bringing in Devin Singletary, who's a solid back. 
and they bring in Drew Locke. So I feel like they're they're set. They're they're okay with quarterback going into this this season. At least they feel that way. Doesn't mean that they are that way. It just means they feel that way. I personally would still be trying to get a quarterback if I'm the Giants, but it kind of is what it is. You already know you got another year there with uh, Danny Dimes. So might as well grab more weapons. Malik Neighbors is a fabulous pick here. Does he tight ends? They go Joe Alt. This one feels pretty obvious, especially after they dropped all that cash money on Calvin Ridley. And yeah, Joel will be a good addition there. You can move Andre Dillard over a right tackle where he can compete with Nicholas Petit Freer, Dylan Radins. Uh, they're kind of set at their guard positions. I mean, Brun Brunskill is fine. He's fine. He's fine, honestly. But you still feel like that right side of the offensive line is pretty weak. And then a pick A, Dallas Turner going to the Falcons. Another obvious pick now with all the moves that the... Uh, Falcons have made, get in Kirk Cousins, bring in Darnell Mooney, trade in for Rondale Moore. It kind of feels like, yeah, let's go ahead and just grab the first defender off the board. Let's grab the first uh, edge. We get our pick of it. So, yeah, they go and get Dallas Turner. Kind of feels like the obvious pick here at this standpoint. But before we get into pick nine, if you want to know more about the NFL draft, you want to know more about these prospects, then go ahead, check out my draft guide. Here's a little promo for it. Listen, I know you love the NFL Draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice, hefty watch list of players during this college football season. Well, go ahead, check out my draft guide. You can purchase it for only 30 bucks by Venmoing or PayPaling me. Link's in the description. It's a one-time payment, and you get it for this whole draft cycle, and forever and always, technically. It's a Google spreadsheet, so send me your email when you send the payment. I'll get you hooked up. You will see my current process prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel at pick nine the chicago bears take roma dunze and honestly this pick for the bears if they want to take wide receiver at nine it feels like the stars are aligning because you have the, the falcons who've invested in wide receiver and free agency and the tight ends so it kind of feels like, yeah, either Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, one of them will be there for you if you want to go ahead and select it. So, yeah, they get Roma Dunze. At pick 10, the Jets go with Olu Bashanyu. Uh, I am a bit curious about what they're going to do at... Uh, or do with Elijah Vera Tucker. Because they just added Morgan Moses... Uh, I mean, they could. I mean, you get Olu Fashanu, you start him at left tackle immediately. They bring in John Simpson to take that left guard spot. So Elijah Vera, Vera Tucker, they might be just keeping it at guard. They might just be keeping it at guard, which kind of allows you to draft a tackle here. Because I still think tackle is one of the best values uh, at, at this pick for the Jets. So, yeah. Olu, they go Olu Fashanu, one of the best uh, pass protectors. In this class, people are going to worry about the hand size. I honestly doesn't really show up until like it shows up as a run blocker. He's not really uh, a guy that'll bury people and whatnot. But as a pass protector, I think it's kind of a non-issue for me. Okay, we got Talanisa Fuaga going to the Chargers. So the Chargers move back, grab extra picks. And then they get their right tackle of the future. They brought, they're brought they bringing back Keenan Allen. Honestly, they might end up bringing back Mike Williams, depending on uh, how much he's going to cost, which really depends on what other teams are going to be offering him. So that's something to be on the lookout for. Uh, but, I mean, with the top three wide receivers off the board, I know some people will also talk about Brock Bowers here. And I think, honestly, at 11, that's fine. That's fine. But I think right tackles also would be a really good pickup. At pick 12, the Denver Broncos trade out and the Bengals move up to get Brock Bowers. I don't think the Bengals get Bowers. I don't. They added Mike Gesicki, and I know that's not fabulous. But 
to move up to get Brock Powers? I don't think so, man. I don't think the Bengals are going to be moving in this draft. If they're moving up, I honestly think it'd be for, for a tackle. They're current, like currently you have no one at right tackle unless they feel confident in, uh, who is it, DeAndre Smith? Let's see. Deontay Smith. That's a DeAndre. Deontay Smith, former, I think, EC, uh, ECU, East Carolina uh, prospect. So, they, I mean, you might as well go take a swing on one of these right tackles, whether it's JC Latham, Marius Mims, and you could probably stay put at 18 and get that guy. So, we got the Las Vegas Raiders going with JC Latham. Assume this is like a replacement for Illuminor. Uh, kind of depends on how they feel about their Mumford. They're a right tackle. Uh, but Latham, honestly, I, some teams apparently are looking at him like a guard, which, I mean, I guess that's fine. Which, I mean, you can play him at guard. Your right guard spot's open. I think either way, you're playing him on the right side, and that kind of works out. That's A-OK. -okay. I think the they could do a lot of things. They could go with the first corner off the board as well, and I think that would work out. Big 14, Mar oh my gosh, I, I I jumped the gun, I thought it was going to be a Marius Mims, and they go Brian Thomas, honestly, probably a better pick would be Troy Fatanu, but is what it is, they go Brian Thomas, I mean, I get it, Michael Thomas, you released him, you moved on from him, but I still feel like tackle is a big need, even if Ryan Ramchak comes back, your left tackle, like Trevor Pettin wasn't good. So I feel like Troy Fontenot would be a really good pick up there. And even if you want to give Pettin another go at tackle, Fontenot could play guard. So it's kind of like vice versa, you know. And then pick 15. We got the Colts going with Jared Verse. I love Jared Verse. I'm unsure about this pick, though. Let's take a look at... Because the Colts have actually added quite a bit on off on the on the uh, defensive line. I say they've added quite a bit, but I mean they've just br brought back their guys. They did add Jannard Avery. You got Ro Ro uh, Raquan Davis on the interior there. I mean I don't know, man. I mean re-signing Taquan uh, Taquan Lewis. I don't think they necessarily have to go with an edge, but I mean I get that. If you're Gus Bradley and you're never gonna blitz, you want to get a good pass rush from your team but i feel like corners kind of kind of the call there kind of the call because you they need better players there at the corner position i don't know we'll see we'll see pick 16 the steelers move up to get a marius mims hot dickety dog so they trade with seattle Go ahead, snag Marius Mims to come play that right tackle. Broderick Jones will play left. I think that's fine, man. I like I like the Steelers going with tackle in this class. Uh, I mean, the Steelers do have they. they I mean, unless they're conf they're okay with Nate, Nate Herbig at center. And I mean, they they could also make additions at corner. They just brought in. Dante Jackson, but I mean, I don't think that's crazy. They, yeah, they need more guys at corner as well. I don't know, man. This is going to be, uh, I feel like the Steelers could probably stay put at 20 and just kind of take whatever falls to them, whether that's Jackson Powers Johnson or Marius Mims, Quinion Mitchell, and feel pretty good about it. Before we get to pick 17, got to give a shout out today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. If you like weekly best ball or my favorite, higher or lower on player prop bets, then check out Underdog Fantasy. They don't just do football, but they got baseball, basketball, soccer, golf, even eSports. But if you sign up using promo code BROSHMO, they will match that first deposit up to $100 redo. So remember, if you sign up at Underdog Fantasy, Use promo code BROSHMO. But as always, bet responsibly. Bet within your means. Pick 17. Jacksonville Jaguars go with Quinion Mitchell. All right, all right, all right, all right. So I think this is just... They, they need to add more guys there that can fit Ryan Nielsen's scheme. He's going to be more of a uh, man-heavy press 
type of uh, coverage. And Quinion Mitchell just has had an absolute banger of an offseason per offseason draft process. At pick 18, the Denver Broncos go with Bo Nix. So I imagine when they traded back, grab extra assets, and then you're ultimately going to probably take Bo Nix. Uh, I feel like Bo Nix is a really good fit for Sean Payton and his scheme. Also, I just put out my quarterback rankings, my final quarterback rankings of the draft season. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it in the iCard up here where I go into a little bit more detail with the quarterbacks. But yeah, I like this pick for Denver, especially with their ability to trade down. Needed more assets. Darian Arnold going to the Rams. This is just like picture perfect. Like for real, you sign Darius Williams, you bring in Darian Arnold. Cause I'm gonna be honest, like the Rams, I don't think they've brought back Witherspoon, who was probably their best corner last year. Yeah, and I mean, I don't feel great about Darian Kendricks. Kendrick going out there. Trey Tomlinson feels more like a depth guy. So, yeah, I'd, I'd pick up Terry and Aro. He gives the inside-outside versatility. This is just a really good pick at this juncture of the draft. All right, Troy Fontenu going to the Seahawks, and he specifically lists him as a guard. And I would... I would give this guy a shot at tackle. He's got the length. That was kind of the big thing, the big hiccup when it came to, is he a guard or a tackle in the NFL? So 34 and a half inch arms, I'm like, you know what? We're going to try you at tackle and unless you fail there, yeah, no, you're going to be a tackle for us. So I don't necessarily like the pick here. Uh, Seahawks probably could go. Like Jackson Powers Johnson wouldn't be bad. Uh, I mean, you'd probably be playing him at, well, you'd want to play him at center, but I mean, you really have a guard open in. So maybe guards just not in the books early on and Seahawks just got a trade down. Like might need a bigger trade down or you could just send it and take Grant Barton here. That is literally always an option. So yeah. Miami Dolphins, fins up, baby. They go Byron Murphy. I get it. Christian Wilkins. He went, uh, bye-bye Miami. Bye bye. The Raiders are gonna go pay me a lot of money. I don't know why he's Italian all of a sudden, but he is. Byron Murphy's a good pickup. Is he a pound for pound replacement for Christian Wilkins? Not necessarily, but <sighs> I mean, I'm okay with it. I get it. The offensive line class didn't really fall, or the offensive tackle class, I should say. We could send it with Jackson Powers Johnson, but I feel like the Dolphins are gonna bring back. Well, I mean, no, we can't. We, we signed freaking Aaron Brewer. We need a guard. I mean, you can play Jackson Powers Johnson at guard, but I feel like he's a better center than he would be guard. Doesn't exactly have ideal length. I don't know, man. Tough situation here for the Dolphins, but Byron Murphy's a good pickup. Philadelphia Eagles, they keep going edge. What the hell is this? Liatu Latu. So they bring back Brandon Graham. You sign Bryce Huff. You have Nolan Smith. And you still need to trade Josh Sweat and Hassan Reddick. Why are you going edge here? Why not go like corner? I don't know. But Leatu Latu, I get it. The dude is, for a lot of people, is going to be like a top 20 prospect. So I understand it. Pick 23, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Hot diggity dog. I love to see my man get a little bit of hype. Uh, I really do feel like the Texans are in a great situation where they're like, yeah, let's just like good players follow us. We could take a receiver. We could take a corner. We could take uh, we we could take some a cat on the defensive interior. We could we could even send it with if we want offensive line help. We could get offensive line help if we want. Like honestly, they could do, literally do whatever here, and I would probably be like, yes. But Kool Aid McKentry is a great fit. They're opposite of Derek Steenley. Pick 24, Jackson's, Jackson Powers Johnson going to the Cowboys. This is kind of a dream scenario. You lose Tyler Biedash in a free agency. You need some sort of replacement there at center. Currently, who is playing center for the Cowboys? Well, in fact, it's probably no one. Oh, Brock Huffman. I actually like Brock Huffman. I liked him coming out of Virginia Tech, but he was... 
a free agent. So maybe you should draft that next guy. So this would be a good pickup. No tackle on the board here. Uh, I think all the tackles got snagged already. So yeah. Yeah, unless you want to like maybe reach on some guy who's more of like an early second, like a Jordan Morgan or a Kinsley Sumatea. And I say reach, but like the, those are top 50, in some cases top 40 prospects. So they're definitely within this range, but... Uh, if I'm the Cowboys, I'd probably want to trade down if I'm going to select one of those guys. All right, before we get into pick 25, what's cracking lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. I appreciate it much. It really helps out the channel. But please let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that beautiful, sensual, intimate football discourse. Green Bay Packers take Kinsey Suomatea. Uh, I really think they're going to give Walker a go at left tackle. I mean, you can play Suomatea early at guard if you want to. I think that's in the cards. I don't know, man. Packers is another team that can really do a variety of different things at this pick, and I'd be okay with. Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Graham Barton. I think that's a solid pickup. Is, uh, they got openings there on the interior. As I think it's their left guard spot that's currently wide open. You can keep Robert Hainsey at center. I think he's fine. Uh, yeah, it's Logan Stenberg. Uh-oh, former Kentucky guard. So yeah, you're probably looking for or you're looking at Barton to play left guard here. Could also go edge. I think that's in the cards. Do you love an edge at this pick, though? That's kind of the question. So, Graham Barton. I think I think this is this is where I start thinking about Graham Barton. Actually, I really like this fit too. Arizona Cardinals go with Chop Robinson. They haven't they they've really added a lot of defensive interior help, but they've done nothing at the edge position. So, go out and get the uh, twitched up super athlete that is Cooper uh, Cooper Chop. Robinson, there we go. Buffalo Bills go with Adonai Mitchell. I think this is a good fit if you're looking for that vertical threat there. Uh, he's also a very good route runner. Tested really well. He's definitely going to be a first. I think he's probably going to be a first round pick. I don't want to say definitely, but I feel like if, I had to, like if I had to pick five receivers that go in the first round, he would probably be among them. All right, we got Nate Wiggins going to the Detroit Lions. They did get him. Uh, they did bring back Emmanuel Mosley. They did trade for Carlton Davis. They brought in a Meek Robertson. But you probably want to invest some high, high draft capital in trying to get the corner position right. Wiggins, I don't think 173 is his playing way. I think he's closer to 180, which is still a little light. But he's also like the youngest corner prospect in this class. So I feel like he can put on the weight if you really need him to. But uh, he brings that speed. He, he was just a, a nightmare at Clemson. He was so good at mirroring other receivers. Pick 30. I forgot Tyler Guyton was on the board. I ain't going to lie with you. I am not going to lie with you. They did just trade away Morgan Moses. So they probably feel good about potentially getting a tackle, if not here, somewhere in the draft. Uh, or they feel really good about Daniel Falele. We'll see. We'll see. But Tyler Guyton, I, I like him in this back end of the first round area. I didn't even mention him with Jordan. I, I, I don't know why. I just assumed he was off the board. But I like him in this back end of the first round area. Especially, like, doesn't even necessarily need to start early for the Ravens. You could go in and have him have a competition with Daniel Falele for that right tackle spot. And you know Stanley's probably going to get hurt. So, for sta uh, Stanley, yeah, it's going to get hurt. So, probably moving one of them to left tackle anyway at some point this season. Uh, Johnny Newton going to the Niners. Huh. I mean, they've made a lot of additions on the interior. Because, okay, they did release Eric Armstead. 
but they traded for Malik Collins. I believe they brought in. Oh, uh, well, I know they re-signed Givens. Uh, oh, that's right. Jordan Elliott. So that, I mean, you could go ahead and address it here if you want. The value is good. I still feel like they should probably go with somewhere on the offensive line, but that's just me. You could even go corner. I think that would work, but pick 32. We got Keon Coleman going to the Chiefs. I mean, come on. I think we all kind of feel that this pick's going to be wide receiver. The question is, what wide receiver? And I ain't going to lie. I kind of fancy Xavier Worthy here. That's right. Speed, speed, speed. But Keon Coleman, man, a lot more fluid as a runner than 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 what his 4-6-1-40 time leads you to believe. And then teams without first-round picks, apparently we got two Keon Coleman's going to the Panthers, one going to the Chiefs. So excellent work there by the team here at CBS. Uh, look at that, Braden Fist going to the Browns. Look at that, Braden Fist I haven't been taken yet, so there you go. Uh, I thought they brought back some... Uh, I'm pretty sure Cleveland was able to stuff that interior, though. Probably a lot of one-year deals. Yeah, like Quentin Jefferson. They bring back Maurice Hurst. Joby Harris. They still got Dalvin Thompson. They drafted Ika uh, Siaki Ika just last year. So maybe you go in a different direction, perhaps. We will be streaming tonight talking about each team and how they've fared in free agency, handing out some free agent grades. So join us for that. But if you want more free agent content or if you want draft content, you can check out my quarterbacks video down here. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.